Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Metro Another M. In the last part, we beat the game! But we're not at 100% yet, and as at the end of the credits, Sam has said, she's back at the bottle ship for a reason we'll get into later on. But now we have free reign to fully explore the bottle ship, sort of. Now that we have power bombs, there's a few more doors we can open, and they now mark every item you haven't grabbed in every sector on the map, as well as show you the individual sector's completion. For instance, uh, here in the main sector, we're at, what was it, 61% we saw a second ago? So now we have a section I'd almost compare to a Dragon Quest game's victory lap, where once you've beaten the game, you get to go around the areas as powerful as you can be just messing around. But there is a de facto end point to this scenario. Uh, as the objective marker just showed, our goal is to get to the office above the room that we fought the Brug Mass in back in, what was that, part two? Uh, to grab whatever it is we're looking for. With that said, uh, you might think that means this could be a very short post game. You can just go right there. Uh, not quite. We'll get more into that in a few minutes. With that said, uh, I'm not sure how many of the items here in this part of the main sector you can come back to get at what point. I think by the time you get the space jump, you can't come back, uh, past the room where Adam is, I think, at the furthest, or was at the furthest. Because I think either the elevator doesn't work in one of those rooms, or something of that relative fashion... Again, usually whenever I play this game, I end with less than half of them what I have now by this point. So I don't really bother coming back to this area past a certain point. Like, you might be able to come back as soon as you unlock bombs the Brug Mass and maybe do this missile tank. So I probably could have gotten this one a lot earlier in the game. I just didn't. And the fact that the only enemies in that area are gamers probably supports that. By and large, this is a pretty quiet post-game section, partially because at this point in the game, with every beam unlocked, the power bombs and the screw attack, enemies aren't really going to be posing a threat. Uh, even former mini-bosses like Mighty Gryptions, if you run into any Galmanians, you can more or less just bowl them down with the screw attack really quickly, or... Uh, powerbomb them to death. Power bombs are grossly effective. Uh, with that said, I should note, uh, you'll rarely get to see it, but power bombs do have one limitation in the game, by the way. Another bathroom break. Uh, power bombs in this game work a little weirdly in that you charge them up like a charge beam, like we've gone over already, of course. But they also have a cooldown period. When you use one, the meter that is also our charge beam stays red near the top and slowly empties, and you can only lay another power bomb again when that bar is fully emptied. I'd say it's maybe a 10 to 15 to 20 second cooldown, somewhere in that regard, because they don't want you spamming it to just completely break any combat encounters moving forward, but it breaks enough of them that it's still absurdly powerful. There's a reason they made you wait until the very end of the game to have this. Adam was right, it, it will vaporize. I remember when I first played the game, and I got to this section, I think this is when I had the most fun, because in a lot of regards, while I was into the combat back when, and to an extent I still am now, even though I find it kind of bare compared to a lot of other action games, especially by this developer, it was the most Metroid-like in how I could approach it. I could go anywhere at any point and just feel like I was exploring more so than forced along a path. Nowadays, now that I expect this game to not be Metroid, I... probably find the campaign itself better. For better or worse. Because this does feel, admittedly in a way, tacked on that you can't get everything until right now. And there's a lot of items you have to go back and get. Not to mention, uh... I have gripes with this story section in terms of what we accomplish here, but I'll get into that when we end this within the next two or three parts, I think. Uh, the way we're going to be doing this is once we get into the main sectors, like sectors one through three, I'm going to be doing the same thing I did back when we did laps of the main sectors uh, before we the end of the game and speed up what we're going between just to make this go by a bit faster. We're only here for the new stuff by and large anyway. 
as I feel that leaves a good structure, shows you where I'm going without completely cutting out everything, while also allowing me to shorten the video footage. Because uh, I think the way some people have handled this is they just talk about the entire game, their thoughts on it, the entire walk through, and that's not a bad way to handle it. But it leaves a lot of open air and dead air, and I want to minimize that as much as possible. This is already admittedly been a longer LP than I thought it would be. I thought we'd be done within 15 parts because this was done across 15 recording sessions. Uh, and I thought maybe I'd be able to add, edit out more. Uh, no, with this game, with how it's structured, you really can't edit out a lot. Helps that I think approximately two videos at least were 50 to 80% cutscene. Not for nothing. I, the fact that they went as hard on the story, I can applaud in the base concept, but they needed to make a story that was well-written first before they did that, I think. So yeah, our goal is up there. However, problem with that... The elevator in this room we used to get up to that area in the main game doesn't work anymore. It's red. We cannot go up there because they want this post-game to be you exploring the sectors. But... Now these doors that I believe I investigated as far back as part two can now be opened with a power bomb. And there's a reason they wanted you to have a power bomb, because each one of these doors is one of these I think these things called Desbrockians we saw in the finale. And these enemies are rough. They are fast, they hurt, they can dodge your attacks pretty easily, be it charge attacks or super missiles. Power bombs can be effective against them, I think, as can screw attack. The biggest problem with them though is that they can heal. Uh, the more damage you do, the more red they glow. To the point where they get stunned at a certain point, and if you don't do a lethal strike on them, then they heal every bit of their HP back up. Uh, with that said, you can stun lock them slightly. Uh, this is notably more so when you just spawn them with a power bomb. Uh, the first one you can't really do this on because it has that cutscene of it spawning. But if you lay the power bomb and immediately go into first person, prepare a super missile. Uh, you can just chain lock them with that, and I think they'll die within three or four of that. There are at least a number of ways to take care of them. You just need to be careful that you can take care of them quickly enough, so to speak. And yeah, uh, that elevator being locked on the way to where Adam was is why that item in the uh, hallway that's in the vents with the hive that would be gotten, like part two or three, can either be one of the first items you get or the very last item, because we now need to come to Adam's office from that direction. Thankfully, it turns out, these Desbrockians blocked off major doorways that interlinked the sectors. This is the closest thing to what Other M does in the regard of the interlinking hallways and, like, Fusion or Zero Mission, and to an extent, Dread. Uh, but it's much more limited, because we're still gonna need to use the main elevator to explore a good bit of the post-game here. Because where does this bring us? Well, we're right next to, if I'm recalling correctly, Area Zero. Or Sector Zero, rather. With that said, uh, the one of the more annoying parts of this post-game angle is, while they do mark every item you haven't found yet on the mini-map, that's how you chain lock them, by the way, with the uh, Super Missile, there's still a lot of backtracking to go. For instance, areas we've seen, power bomb doors, are the first area we were in in Sector 3, which we have to backtrack from the entrance to Sector 3 to get to, and that's a long trek. There's one right near where the Biosphere Research Facility was. We got a lot to go. Also, Nightmare's no longer here. Uh, I guess I can use that as the segue into what I'm going to talk about a lot during this post-game. Uh, the plot implications of some things. So, this game happens before Fusion the Timeline, and... The Ridley Corpse, if you go back to that portion of the Bioweapon Research Facility, is also gone. And the implication here at this point is that the Galactic Federation that was here took them and took them to the BSL station from Fusion, where they would be experimented on, more would be learned about them, and eventually when the X-Parasite stuff happens, that, that everything that happens there would happen as it did. Because uh, by and large, what Adam brought up before he died about Sector Zero being created and the Metroid Project being created by a very small faction of the Galactic Federation is something they've technically been building since Fusion, but we didn't understand that at first due to mistranslations. Uh, in Fusion, when they talk about the Galactic Federation hating Samus and the AI hunting them down, 
that wouldn't be the entire Galactic Federation. The, the script makes it seem like it, but it is a mistranslation, apparently, as we've learned over the years. It's a small splinter cell that's a lot more radicalized than what they want to do that would be hunting them down. Which is why, say, in Dread, for instance, she seems to be working with the Galactic Federation again. I'm glad they started tackling that again almost immediately, because I, I very much feel nowadays the plotline for the series outside of maybe Prime is becoming the Galactic Federation definitely isn't a very innocent group themselves in a lot of regards. And I'm hoping Prime 4 honestly touches on that a little bit due to what the ending of Federation Force was. Maybe a little bit of them being the villain, maybe a little bit of Silux still being around there in the background. They could do a lot of interesting stuff. With that, though, I feel I should address the biggest elephant in the room when it comes to other M's writing. And that's... They really had a thing for moms, huh? <laughs> Between the whole mother brain thing, the Melissa and uh, Madeline relationship, Sam is constantly focusing on the baby. You know, looking back, she doesn't focus on it as much as I remember. There's a lot of mother symbolism in this game, which is odd. Because in a lot of ways, it feels like the game's main plot points in terms of what Samus' herself focus on is a father figure. A very sloppily handled one at that. They really do not do Adam justice in this game because with how the manga laid him out, how her relationship seems to be with him in Fusion and a little bit in Dread when it comes to that, Adam feels like someone you could respect. Someone that could be a leader and understand the plight of his soldiers while still being fair to what his mission is. This Adam really doesn't give that impression to me. As, honestly, if anyone, Anthony gives me more of an impression than that. And that's why I really hope in one of the next games we end up seeing Anthony again. He's the best part of this game's characterization. Like, a lot of this game, as I mentioned before, between the Ridley scene and a couple of other minor details are lifted wholesale from the Zero Mission prequel manga. And I guess maybe that was their way of trying to bring it over to the West because I don't think that manga was released here. But I feel they really slopped the delivery because Adam and Samus in that manga leave on very amenable terms, very respectful. She, I believe, even sasses him and he sasses right back, which makes the start of this feel very weird. And it's fine to retcon things. Hell, I'm a, I'm a Sonic fan. I'm a Metroid fan. I am... A, I would say a Phoenix Wright fan, but Phoenix Wright didn't really retcon stuff as much as it did add details to things later on that they didn't put a lot of time into beforehand to either make new twists or otherwise, which I guess is a retcon. And I'm a Mega Man fan. I'm used to things being retcon, but if you're going to retcon something and change how it works relationship-wise with characters especially, you need to still make it well-written. And Samus in this game feels very... lacking in terms of her relationships with everyone that's not Anthony. Admittedly, that's partially intentional because, well, the entire deleted plotline got dropped for a reason. They, they had no characters outside of Anthony and Adam in terms of personality. Because even though Adam's personality is bad, it's still a personality at least. James just gets a, I might be kind of an asshole, and uh, looking back, uh, you really, for they, they sort of foreshadow him being the deleter as early as the bioweapon research facility. Oh, not the Bioweapon Research Facility, the Biosphere Test Facility. Because he's the one you find at the console that is self-destructing as, uh, I think that was... I forget his name already, it starts with an M, brought up. And, uh, he's the one who brings up that Lyle's missing because he already killed him at that point. But, yeah, yeah, all those characters are completely bland. Oh, also, now that we're in post-game, we can come over here to where we first saw little birdie, uh, Baby Ridley, and get this missile tank. That is, I believe, the only missile tank that's not behind a power bomb door in any regards that you can only get after beating the game. I think. I've heard people say you can get that before a certain point in the game, but I don't think I've ever been here when the door opens before post-game. And uh, this is easily the most... One of the two worst backtracks in this entire section. We need to go all the way back towards the biosphere test facility again. That's, like, the width of the entire area. In some ways, this is very reminiscent of how Zero Mission and Fusion and Dread handled their endgame collectibles where you get the final power-up, usually power bomb, you have to go all around to get everything. And I haven't liked when any of those games did it. Fusion, at least the excuse was it wasn't power bombs that you needed to do that with, even though you needed to collect a lot of power bombs in it. I believe there was like, what, 70-something in that game? Uh... I really feel like Metroid games moving forward after Dread need to either give you power bombs sooner or make it so that you can gather most of the items that 
the final power-up gives you along the way through other secret methods. As I really don't like last-minute backtracks for 100% in Metroid. I don't mind it in games like Castlevania, because Castlevania games, especially once they started getting more in-depth after Symphony of the Night, usually had some form of, like, thing you could grind for, or collectibles to grab, side quests, especially in the case of, like, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. We needed more to do in a Metroid game when it comes to getting 100% out if they want to do this, is what it comes down to, I feel. You getting tired of finding these things yet if you're playing along, by the way? I hope not, because you still got at least like three, four, five left to fight. Thankfully, by this point, I believe this is the last item in Sector 1 we need to grab. So we're getting there. All we need to go back to for 100% now, I believe, is Sector 3 and uh, the Bioweapon Test Facility. Uh, research Facility, rather, where the end of the game was. There's actually a few items waiting there for us. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 20, we're going to continue cleanup, uh, probably getting close to the end of the game in the process, not quite finishing yet. I imagine this is going to end in part 21 or 22. I haven't edited the future stuff yet. See you guys then.